Now this man, a nice old man now, seven children all with him, he has started a boutique. And you know he's not going to buy packets of tipiti yeah. if people are not going to buy it. So that to me is evidence that there is a very positive mindset amongst these people that they can have economic activity, they can have their own entrepreneurship. One of the problems in the 70s is that because we had a very statist approach to government, when government couldn't do enough for people, they tended to do it for people who were their vote bank, and particularly the Tamils of the North who are wonderfully entrepreneurial people, had no opportunity for entrepreneurship. This government is determined to ensure a proper place for such activity, which will involve training. So we are trying to do this. I think we've done a very good job with the IDP camps. And, you know, it's not ideal, but compared with anywhere else in the world. I mean, the UN officials who have come from places where there's been real suffering have told us, you know, this is extraordinary. Uh, lots of interesting uh, information coming from Professor Rajiv Vijay Singh, uh, Secretary of the Ministry of Disaster Management and Human Rights. We'll be back with you in a moment. Welcome back to I Born Sri Lanka. We are having our discussion and saying I Born to Professor Rajiva Vijay Singh, who is the Secretary for Ministry of Disaster Management and Human Rights. Welcome back to I Born Sri Lanka, Rajiv. Thank you. Now, uh, there are lots of criticism against Sri Lanka about human rights violation and that we, have, uh, we are the worst country in the world, all sorts of things. As the Secretary of the Ministry, could you tell our viewers and give the answer? what is expected from you and the truth. Let's speak the truth. Well, I mean, part of it is that we do have human rights problems. I mean, we have always said that. Our ministry has been in the forefront of trying to suggest ways of improving the situation. But I think, given that we have had problems in the past as well, our record has improved. For instance, in what is perhaps the most important area, which is the conduct of the armed forces during the war, it was fantastic. You know, one of the points I've always made is that there has not been a single allegation of rape against our army for the last eight years. Now, we have to accept that in the 80s there were allegations, and I think many of them could be substantiated. The same was true to a more limited extent in the 90s, but then you had a solid program of training, and I've also discussed this, I've discussed it with the police who do have problems, but the police don't have enough training, you know, they, the younger people in the police are taken in hurriedly. And one thing, and the present IGP has moved very quickly on instituting new programs of training. But the army training was really extremely good, and we have always asked for instances of violations. I mean, one problem we have had is the tremendous effectiveness of LTT propaganda, unfortunately helped by certain people in Sri Lanka, who thought that this was a way of gaining political advantage. I think two years ago or so, it's now changed, but you know, even some of the foreign diplomats in Sri Lanka, you know, didn't believe that this government would last. You know, part of the Colombo... Or they story. wanted it to fall. Well, in all fairness, you know, they moved in certain social circles in Colombo that had a mindset that saw this government as an aberration. It was very limited. You now find, I've discussed this with foreign diplomats, and many of them say, yeah, there were problems, you know, some people didn't quite realize that this was an elected government. So I think that has changed, but there was a mindset, let's say, two years ago, 2007. There was also a sense that, you know, no one could win a war militarily. I think there were people in, even in our foreign ministry who felt that at the time. But I think we had to show them that we were going to destroy terror, having tried to talk. That was important, because I think we had an obligation to try to settle the problem in other ways. We did our best. But when the LTT proved intransigent, I think we had to take action. But at the same time, we had to make it very, very clear that this was nothing against the Tamil people. The army was absolutely to behave well, and they did. I think, you know, if you take the whole struggle in the East, there was no uh, uh, allegation of civilian casualties bar one. That was Katharaveli. And the army said, yeah, we did it. But we didn't know there were civilians. We did it on mortar locating radar. And Human Rights Watch 
which claim there were indiscriminate attacks on civilians, but only had this one instance in their entire report. They also acknowledged that the LTT were there, they had guns, and there were bunkers. So I think the army which fired had every right to. Now, some people talk of human rights and only they are concerned. You know, I headed the Peace Secretariat. One of the things I did was I got a report every day on any allegations that appeared in Tamil Net or elsewhere, and I got a report on that from the Army and the Air Force. Uh, the Army sometimes couldn't provide the information because, of course, it was on a broad front. The Air Force was punctilious. They would turn up, sometimes indignant, and say, this is what we attacked, this is the area, it was a military target, and, you know, I can't vouch for what they told me, but it certainly sounded very well reasoned. And it is remarkable, and I have the statistics, up to 2008 December there were f over 400 airstrikes, and there were only 29 of them in which there were allegations of civilian deaths, of which over 20 had only one or two. This is not indiscriminate attacks on civilians. You know, if you read what happens elsewhere in the world, the number of civilian casualties is much greater. We were scrupulous, because these are our people in some of the other areas, you know, they're just terrorists. Mm -hmm. There's an othering. We never othered in that respect. With the army, until December 19, uh, 2008, there were only allegations of 78 civilian deaths in the whole period from the beginning of the Northern Battle until the end. However, 2009 was much worse. But I think when you look at it, quite a lot of those casualties were inflicted by the LTT. Even if you read the latest report of the University Teachers of, on Human Rights, which is critical of the government, and there are some instances I think we should investigate, but much of it is the LTT deliberately fired from the middle of civilians. And, you know, collateral damage does happen. It was regrettable. None of these people insisted that the reason for all this was because in 2008, when the LTT was preparing this hostage crisis, when they were driving the people with them, the international community didn't demand that they let them go. You know, all the statements were, we asked the LT to allow freedom of movement, but we also asked the government to open up the camps, do this, that, and the other. So, you know, it was a balance. For instance, you know, even old Radhika Kumar Swami had this wonderful line once that, you know, uh, there's an allegation of aerial bombing, which will never be substantiated, and this is similar to the LTT blowing up a bus in Colombo and killing 10 school children. You know, there's a big difference between a terrorist act that targets a civilian target with children in it and what was clearly, if it happened, collateral damage because the figures show yes. that it wasn't anywhere near village. So I think with regard to the armed forces, I have no hesitation in saying our record is amongst the best in the world. However, there have been other instances. Torture is a case in point. We have instances in this country. One of the reasons I respect and admire the UN Rapporteur on Torture is he never used it as a weapon of war. Some people made human rights allegations to try and stop us defeating the Tigers. No, Manfred Novak always pointed out the problems, pointed out that problems occur even more in police stations in the South, and we must do something about it. He's quite correct. Of course, we have had prosecutions. Even recently, two days ago, there was an instance of a prosecution. Some of the people were let off. Part of the problem, I suppose, and I don't know whether other people would call it a problem, is that our laws demand proof beyond reasonable doubt in a criminal charge. So, for instance, one case, they said, why did the magistrate acquit when the person was found guilty by the Supreme Court? And I said, that's precisely it. It's not that we want to stop it. When the case came before the Supreme Court for fundamental rights, a particular police officer was found guilty. But when this came before the magistrate's court, they got very good lawyers. In fact, I told Mr. Valley Omino, why don't you have a code of conduct for lawyers if there's a prima facie case? Don't defend. But of course, lawyers also need to make money. So the result is in the Lawyers court. and uh, INGOs, I mean, we'll come to that. Okay, I mean, but, I, but, but on this instance, the man was acquitted in court. But that's not because we wanted him acquitted. We brought a case. We should be doing more than that. We should be moving more quickly. But one of the things the police told me, and the senior policeman now is worried about this alliance. They said, our problem is a lot of the training that we receive on professional development has reduced in the last 15 years. The first thing the present IGP did, not perhaps he did a lot of things, yeah. but he said he has restored the detective course and the senior detective course, which had been abolished. Now, this is how you find yeah. out what happened. Those courses had gone.
So yeah. now they're back. Yeah. I think the present IGP has a longer <laughs> tenure. Yeah. You know, some his predecessors had over one year at a time. It was difficult for them. But the present gentleman has a longer tenure because he's much younger. And he has shown himself determined to restore professionalism, which I think we must look forward to.